Good afternoon, Abbotsford residents. I'm here down at the Abbotsford shit squad, the police department, that caused a major problem in Abbotsford. The crap that took place under that filthy company and that crap that carried on under that filthy company for their boss, Henry Braun, on jobs and lifts wasn't about law. It wasn't about governing Abbotsford. It was a filthy man that put himself in the head of the board and Mike Sears went along with it. There's a GoFundMe in Abbotsford. It's called Democracy Being Challenged in Abbotsford. I beg with you to go please donate to that, Democracy Being Challenged. This is the election, the municipal election. When I learned that they were lobbying the $71 million out on fraud for a new police building. When I learned from Darren Braun, Henry's own son, the fraud that was committed in Abbotsford, Henry's hit and run that got covered up by Mike Sears and Donna Macy, the filthy company, the threat from Olinoff to drop a lawsuit that Henry damaged homes, and Mike Sears went to bat for his boss. I ran for the municipal election. Greg Toes was ordered by Ross Siemens not to let me debate in the chamber because then Greg Toes couldn't get Ross Siemens on to scam the $71 million out of taxpayers. Usually what happens when something's done on a magnitude as this filthy building, there's a dick. You see your MLA, you see your MP, and you see your filthy mayor commemorating to a new police thing. These men and women that frauded Abbotsford were the men who, when Brad Viss hosted the police safety meeting, refused to come and show up for the community. These filthy men and women are the men and women that took your Dodge Chargers in the middle of the winter and slammed into my brother Scott and raced them behind ICBC's back. These are the filthy men and women that went down to the keg and siphoned gas out of your police company vehicles. These are the filthy men that punched the man in the face. These are the filthy men that threatened homeowners and old folks and families and children, Mike Sears and Donna Macy. These are the filthy men that covered Henry's hit and run and wouldn't charge him so he could finish the term to load that $71 million out the building. Everybody knows before that building gets approved, the community must have say. Everybody knows that that job must go to tendering, and it didn't. It was rewarded right there to Unitech right away to steal the $71 million and hike habits for taxpayers. You can see it in Ross's face as he stood today with Pamela Alexis all drained. He fraud in the municipal elections behind elections BC's back by blocking at the chamber, getting Greg to Toes at the hotel, getting Gabriel to take my signs. Henry Brown was going to develop, but Henry Brown saw this. Abbotsford taxpayers' money. No one would question him because Ed Fast and Mike were his best. But a private police divorce became an organized, high-ranking criminal activity gang out of the top. Henry came out when homeowners and me stood here to protest about Henry lobbying a job with Mike DeYoung and Ed Fast next to his to bring development, and Ross Siemens was put in chair as mayor, and Darren Brown was in front of him. It's known as collaborating, racketeering. It's knowing as fraud, giving his dad the job. It was rewarded. Ethan, I believe his name was, the city lawyer, said, I warned them all not to have that shithole kid in front of Ross Siemens, and I told Ross and Dave Lowens and city councils to stop the meeting, it's racketeering. Henry said, you get the bloody job through. 71 bloody goddamn million dollars, frauded. And it wasn't even notified in the newspaper. When I learned from Darren Braun that Henry was controlling the Abbotsford News, that's how he shamed Bruce Bamman and shamed Eric Nival and shamed Mogell and everywhere. Rick Rakes was a longtime pro editor. Tyler Olson was in Henry's house. I knew it was coming to me when I ran. Abbotsford News refused the pro editor to put my campaign even in. I brought one of the best premiers in BC's history to stop this shit. This filthy company is frauding 71 freaking million dollars out of your bloody pocket. And Lucy Goosey Bruce stands by with his mouth shut because MLA Mike DeYoung was involved in the municipal election loading Dave Sudu to city council. Dave Sudu was the man that thrown and had Andy Sudu at the chamber, or UFE, remove me. But the crap Donna Macy did and Mike Sears 
allowed Henry to escalate it to a level that there was no return. He allowed it to escalate to no return. They used this company uniform and name that nobody would ever challenge the company for its corruption and its crap. These men and women sat upstairs knowing that Olenoff said Henry's hit and run that put me in the hospital, knowing the police board and the board should be called in because their boss was Henry Braun. Their head of their boss and their mob was Henry Braun, the mayor. He sat on that board. Mike Sears knew he should have charged them and stopped them with Olenoff's threat. Mike Sears knew that. Even his own man knew that. This filthy, rotten company covered up attempted murder, covered up vicious acts, and carried on. Then this company was involved when it stood by where Roth did that at the chamber and blocked the municipal election. $71 million are out. Under Henry's last budget, Roth goes in to approve the police for another $800 on your tax dollars. I brought the Premier of British Columbia in to freeze taxes, revamp it all, and stop this building. This building wasn't about Abbotsford community. This was awarded to a developer and to this builder, unnecessary. This was a way, and it slept out the door. That's why you didn't see Ed and Mike come out. That's why you didn't see the Abbotsford News print it in the top of how much money or nothing. Henry told the pro editor, you don't print that. Now the building starts, and it's, please, let's let it continue. It's only 71 million. Let's let the fraud continue. Keep the fraud. Them men and women weren't about law. Them filthy men and women, when Donna Macy and Mike Sears put that company in trouble, went too far. Them men and women weren't about this community. When I ran in the election, I ran to speak the truth on the city stage what Ross and Henry did. I ran because Mike Sears covered up a hit and run. I ran because a filthy junk hole, crap hole, fucking whatever garbage you call him, Keelan Olenoff, threatened to drop the lawsuit by Abbotsford homeowners on their houses that worked all their life in videos. And that filthy shithole, whole company upstairs, that whole shithole company sat there when we showed up in the middle of the winter to call Mike Sears out and say, get the safety standards act and the police commissioning board in now, this has gone too far. Mike didn't do that because Mike's filthy boss was Henry Braun. He was intimidated by Henry Braun. Now $71 million is being asked to be frauded out of Abbots for taxpayers. Ross knew when he got great toes to induct him into the Chamber of Commerce, that would give him the mayorship for Henry Brown. He also knew doing that was fraud. He suspected BC election would just look at, I was voted in, it's legit. He never thought the BC election would ever catch on or anybody would ever catch on to his scam that he got Greg Toast to induct him three months in advance. You're in, you're in, you're done. You don't need, even need to command. You're in when the chamber did that. Then Greg Chaos tried to cut me a deal. $71 million is out in fraud to Unitech. 71 friggin' million dollars in fraud. $71 million in fraud for losers. These men and women in that top violated safety. They violated the law and they figured under the company name it should Get away with it. These men and women did that. This shithole company did that. For an individual to know that a man got away with his richness called Henry Brown from an act being punished by the law because he had shithole friends in the top. These men and women now at the top will cringe on their bloody knees will lean through the back doors to Henry Brown to prop him up through the newspaper and do every filthy act they will to try to save the company's name in the community. Because what these men and women are faced with is a total overhaul and a clean out. These men and women sat by and watched that when we showed up in the office. They saw young children, wives, and 80-year-old people. They knew what Donna Macy did. They knew what Olenoff did. They knew what Gertie Pretty did because them officers that showed up to my door said they watched this on your podcast, Mr. Pelican. They have Ed Fast and Mike DeYoung not standing up. And this is how these bastards did this. This can never continue. These men and women have fooled themselves that if we keep building for the 71 million, this elaborate building 
is outrageous. It's just god awful outrageous. I knew from Darren Brown you could retrofit that building for five million with lead coat, and that's more than enough. That wasn't what it was about. Henry saw a way to sleep it out the door when he was leaving for the 71 million for that company to get it. He saw it a way that Abbotsford residents are too soft. He knew when I knew that, I was coming in as a mayor with the premier to stop that fraud. He knew I would bring the RCMP in. Then he had to get great toes with Ross Siemens and it was just open. When Nancy Friesen was upstairs running her mouth off of what Gabriel was gonna do with my signs, these men and women are supposed to be about the law. Means in an election, means in a hit and run, means in a threat, it means anywhere. These filthy men that show up to run that company every day, hid that. Them filthy men convinced themselves of what they were hiding was the truth. Henry said, when I get political, I get mean. When the RCMP told me run for mayor of Abbotsford and flush them all out. These men and women I want to show around the women, around the world, is known as Abbotsford shit squad. These men and women stood by will that happen. These men and women then knew I stood up for Abbotsford residents and they then helped their boss by carrying the threat. Olenoff said in his bloody words, drop the fucking effing video and the lawsuit on Henry or I will personally bury you. Let me tell you how deadly that is. That means that rotten son of a bitch, garbage trash man will take coke and plant it on me. Them men and women sat on your tax dollars, ladies and gentlemen, out my house all day long. It's trying to hope me out of the election in their cop cars. They weren't even smart enough to use undercover cop cars or security. They were trying to bully to pull me out of the election so this wouldn't get stopped or halted. Mike Sears was involved in that. The staff sergeant searched and he said, my guys are accounted for. Somebody at the top is calling that. The lawyer asked me if I wanted a restraining order. The RCMP said no. Show them men and women frauding your tax dollars. These are the men and women that went on the CP track when it's enforced by CP and took your tax dollars and loaded their time cards. These are the men and women that went in a lady's yard and threw kids off of a trampoline where they allowed Mike Sears, or Mike DeYoung, I should say, to throw a massive corona party endorsing Dave Sadu, infecting the corona virus through Al Abbotsford. But that was all right because that was Henry's buddy, Mike DeYoung. These men and women raced them Dodge Chargers. These men and women chimed on top of the community vehicles and were jumping on them and then asked for more tax dollars. These men and women went up to High Street and opened a building for one of their friends to run, I called the community police building, because they had somebody there could run it and fraud it without your approval. This filthy company. Henry was owning this filthy company. It was no longer questionable in front of city council or nothing. It became its own governing body. When I saw them take Juddie Sudu's signs down to get at Fastin, and I saw them doing that to Eric Nival and Bruce Bamman, I had Darren Brown helping me. Today, there's a GoFundMe called Democracy Being Challenged. Nobody should ever be allowed, no company, nobody, and make this clear, nobody. As much as they sit up there and go, it wasn't me, it was Mike, it was Donna. They were all a part of this. It's the same as a gang when you bust them and go, well, I didn't get caught with the Beth in the company. All of you go to jail. They're going to try to peddle of which man can try to save their bloody mortgage. They did this to seniors and they did this to families. And then they came at me when I was going to stand up because Henry ordered them. Henry ordered them. Then they got involved in the election. They did that to Councillor Mogale when Mogale ran against Henry. He sent the Abbots for police to bust him up at the homeless. It was Daring that showed me it. These filthy men did that so Henry could keep rewarding them. These filthy men go home at the end of the day to their children and they tell them that they represent law. When their children see these podcasts that I stood up for what's right and the law and the help of the RCMP and Yale secondaries and all schools see, these men and women are blocked in the community. I'm asking Abbotsford residents to revoke on the taxes and now defund the Abbotsford police. They had more than enough time to charge Henry. 
They had more than enough time to do what was right. That's why we were sent there by the RCMP. They had more than enough time. You can see Mike Sears as he's like this all day long now. You can see Ross Siemens, he sold it, played it. They had a plan, but Darren Brown scoffed that plan. $71 million went out that door. And let me tell you when it out, went out that door. No ribbon cutting, no tendering to the community. That means companies get a bit at the lowest. No breakfast or lunch with the cops. Henry saw away, let's slip it out the door. Nobody will stop it and now it's going. Now we have a problem. Bruce Bamman can't stand up, Lucy Goosey Bruce and go, this is wrong, blame David Eby, because Mike DeYoung was involved in this shit. Mike DeYoung is the main, your hands in that. $71 million is being frauded right now out of Abbotsford taxpayers, unnecessary, because Henry saw a way to kick it out through the door without Abbotsford residents. Henry had counsel in his house. That's why when people said we don't want it, oh, you outvoted six to one, counsel voted it. It was called collaborating in the house. But being threatened by an Abbotsford police, covering a filthy hit and run for their boss, then in the election sitting outside my door, coming down to my work, Racing your cars, getting on a community vehicle here through here called the Gator, going around, jumping ice on each other, endangering each other's life. The filthy acts just continued and continued and continued and continued and continued and continued. There was no leadership, no governing, there was no transparency, there was nothing, not even a financial. Them men and women that sat in front of my house made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars on them freaking time cards. Loaded by that filth, Mike Sears, because I got to cover it. I got to cover it. Mike Sears now wants to call it quits, not to punish, be punished by the law. The shit that they put me through when I stood up to do what's right under the democracy and the law tells me that that is why I run these podcasts on these men and women. So every corner of Abbotsford, they're blocked. When they go in for a coffee or Starbucks, they see them and go, you ran them bloody time cards for this shit. You interfered in the democracy. They feel what they did to us and to me especially back on them. Mike Sears has got his head so far down he can hardly stand up. But what they did in that election was going to enrich them. It was going to enrich them beyond anybody's imagination. Not only was it going to enrich them, it was going to give Henry total dictatorship over Abbotsford. This is what Pierre Polyad says the Prime Minister's trying to do. But Pierre Polyad's best friend was involved with this Ed Fast. Ed Fast was involved right out the get-go for his friend Henry Brown. Today, let me show you what the community can do to Abbotsford shit squad. These are thousands and thousands of dollars. This is what made them cover the hit and run. This is what made Gertie Purdy look away from charging Henry. This is what made Olenoff carry the threat. This is what made Donna Macy do what she did at the top of the police board. This is what made all them men sit upstairs when them seniors and family sat in front of them to say Olenoff threatened. This made that. They only saw this. This is what they're frauding out of habits for taxpayers. This is what will bring you down. This. I'm asking habits for residents to go to GoFundMe and donate as I receive thousands of thousands of dollars to bring in the proper law and to bring in lawyers that will take Mike Sears to a place he's never been, that will take this shithole company for ripping the Abbots for taxpayers off down and never back up. Ladies and gentlemen of Abbotsford residents, when I brought that premier, it was because I learned from Darren Braun that this fraud was going to take place. I learned from Darren Braun that Henry was warding diverse the properties. I learned from Darren Braun that Henry had newspaper pro-editor in his house and it would never get out on the cover. When an 80-year-old lady and grandchildren stand in the freezing rain to talk to a police board and the chief of one of their men carrying a largest dangerous threat and the son of a bitch doesn't come out, he's involved in organized crime. They convinced themselves under that filthy name that they were untouchable. They convinced themselves because Henry Braun was friends with Mike and Ed Fast. Now, Abbotsford News will have to keep promoting it and promoting it and promoting. You could see Abbotsford News promoter knew that $71 million is fraud. Now, they'll see in the phone Bruce Bamman to beg him, please Bruce, please Bruce, do an article. Bruce will say, this is the finest gang we ever had in Abbotsford. This is the gang like nobody had. 
These men and women knew what the fuck they were doing, pardon my language, when they covered Henry's hit and run. They knew what they were doing when Olenoff threatened. They knew what that lousy, garbage, trash woman Donna Macy did when she covered it for Henry Braun. They knew what they were doing for their boss. Nobody's above the law. Not even them filthy men and women that work in there. Nobody. And they blocked it every inch and way. When Ross knew I was taking the city stage for mayor, thanks to the RCMP, because then it would be out. Greg Toes had to block and pull that out. He knew it. He knew that. These men and women, in my opinion, have covered up more than just this. If they did this for Henry without batting an eye, they have took money from richer people in Abbotsford and probably gang members to do more. When these men and women go to the court and they ask the judge, please believe us, this is the company's name, and believe us, and convict it. I believe you're convicting an innocent people. When these men and women fall now in uniform, we always have to think of who the hell you were framing and jamming against the wall for somebody else. The shit that these men and women did is not about policing. This is about filthy men and women that saw a way to make easy money. 71 bloody million dollars frauded, and you can see Ross Siemens is worrying. He's depleted. When Ross's dad came to me, he wanted me to say, now let's go, Henry's finished. Let's get together and govern Ross. It was a way to try to win you over. With these human, Abbotsford residents, seniors, children, RCMP, Daryl Pluckus, Plunkers of the Speaker of the House who stood up front and center, first of all, on Henry's shit and the Abbotsford newspaper, there's no going back. That was Mr. Siemens trying to protect his son from a major criminal charges of collaborating, racketeering, rigging an election, conspiracy to commit conspiracy out of Abbotsford taxpayers using a city office. Abbotsford police, men and women, knew what they did. For me to drive around town in Abbotsford, being pulled over, stalked and followed, was ordered by Henry Brown. That piece of shit, Mike Sears, is why I could tell you he's a piece of shit on World YouTube. He knew what the hell he was doing for his boss. That man does not deserve a free pass. That man cannot get out of here without facing the wrath of the law. Because then it convinces every officer around in the Canada that we can do this because Mike Sears got away with it. These men and women, I guarantee you, next time won't let that happen. All and off next time will pull you off and say you got drug trafficking, you got narcotics and everything. Donna Macy will fudge the report with the police chief. Nobody should be told not to go in there and lay charges. Nobody. Not old, not senior, not youth, nobody. Them men and women were about themselves. So around the world, I want to be on the world stage to say these, these filthy, junk men that call themselves officers, investigators, did this to seniors, and they did it to stop a lawsuit that was filed on Henry Braun. They did it to stop a major lawsuit that was filed by Abbotsford residents on Mayor Henry Braun, their boss. And they figured it was just small things. First we'll threaten, then we'll do this. It led to where they were going to jam the election. It led to where Gertie Purdy caused the hit and run. It led to them, you can see them now as they're not pulled up nowhere, they're jammed everywhere in the community. $71 million. I'm asking Abbotsford residents, that's fraud, and that's got to be halted. Your tax dollars went to other things, and they could have went to help the farmers. They could have went to help the dikes. You know why they didn't do that? Let me tell you, as your governing mayor, because the farmer, you don't get no kickbacks. Here, that company would give you juice under the table. That's why Henry slipped it out the door quietly. That's why they blocked the chamber. That's why they did all what they did. And the newspaper pro-editor 